My name is Lydia Ayres, I'm Head of Drama at Highbury Field School in Islington in London. Hello, I'm Natalie Wilson, I'm the Artistic Director of Theatre Centre, the producer of The Day the Waters King. What made you decide to commission a play about Hurricane Katrina to work on this subject? Um, it's a process. Uh, I mean, first of all, I was interested in commissioning Lisa Evans. Um, so that was sort of the first impulse. I suppose I wanted to do, I love watching plays about big moments in history. So I was very interested in looking at, at, at Hurricane Katrina as a, point, a moment in history um, and recent American history, incidentally. Um, and sort of try and sort of unpack it through the eyes of a, a young person. Um, I also felt that the subject matter would be very rich, not only in the storytelling, but in the kind of theatricality that we could explore. Um, and I didn't know what that was going to be until I got the play, but I was kind of very excited by that. What do you want students to take away from it, I suppose? A lot of the students, um, who, that, that when they see the show, when Hurricane Katrina actually happened in 2005, they might have been too young to sort of even sort of reference it in their, in their memory. Um, and I feel that it was a real a moment in history where a, a American society, which is a society which is very close to us, really ruptured. And a lot of it's underbelly around poverty, class, race, um, sort of came, arose to the surface. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt that it was a really good metaphor for us to look at um, things like civic responsibility and government expectation. It's relevant to see what would happen, what would, how near is far away. So if something happens far away, but how close is it to your experience? And that we're not, that actually there is, there's overlap in all global uh, events. Yeah. Um, I think the writer was also very, very keen for the play to portray young black men in a positive way. So young black men, maybe who aren't grand, who aren't rich, acting as heroes, being heroes to their local community in a time of in dire crisis. And she felt that that was something she really wanted to portray on yeah. stage. And I think that's something we can't have too much of. So the structure of the play is interesting yeah. and certainly would be unusual to the students I teach, you know, that's, it's an unusual, it's not a direct straight, you know, you've got a small number of actors playing lots of parts, it's, um, tell me about how you, how that came about. Basically. Well, it, it, it started off as a play that was actually very well constructed, it was a three act play, okay. it, it fought, you know, with very neat, lovely scenes that oh. happened chronologically one after the other, which worked very well to give us a sort of spine. But it, the scenes were quite long, um, we had to find out about characters in quite a lot of depth in order to understand why they were in a scene. So, you know, we had, so even the scenes kind of worked in a three-act structure. Um, and both me and the dramaturg sort of spoke to Lisa about, you know, the audience, um, but also the way Hurricane Katrina and New Orleans has already been very much documented. So despite these documentaries called When the, when the, when the Levees Broke, I think you forgot that, When the Levees Broke, yeah. and then there's Trouble the Water, which is another documentary. And then there's also Horizons documentary, and how they very much skirted across very, lots of different voices. So we almost like metaphorically put a bomb underneath the play and kind of like let it splinter up. And that's what leads to sort of embraced yeah and she very much sort of derived her inspiration from youtube and the fact that you could switch you could you know like you could click off you can turn channels off you can switch to this um, clip that clip that clip um and be, and be very very quick and you don't almost have you don't have to know who the characters yeah. are then so she could put a lot more voices many more voices in but yet always return to our protagonist just in order so we kept moving a, chronologi a chronological order along so that the audience felt safe within the storytelling right. but that we could then almost go off piste and, and move about the community and across age groups, gender, class, race um, and so forth. Can you tell me anything more about the how, how the play is being rehearsed? Well, my technique is that I very much start from the storytelling. 
You know, so I always, um, what, what is happening, why is it happening, and, and why the characters do what they do, what, what do they want. Mm -hmm. So in one respect, that's very sort of standard Stanislavskian um, naturalistic techniques. But I do feel, and which is something that Lisa embraces, it, is that without action, it's, it's boring. I don't want exposition, mm -hmm. and I don't want feelings. So it's very little feelings. The feelings that the audience give the piece feelings. Yeah. The actors don't. The actors just give action, they tell a story. Yeah. I try and create a physical scaffold, this is what I will do, a physical scaffold to the piece because it, it, it moves across so many different dramatic and theatrical yeah. techniques so rapidly that you can't kind of start doing textual analysis unless this actor knows that it's going to be on this place here and then the next scene will be here and that there's a kind of physical representation of the play first yeah. and then we'll go back through that and change things as necessary to then create a textual representation. Right. I think the scenes, you know, where they're in the middle of the flooding and everyone's, they're all the voices and everyone's lost and yeah. um, how does that, how are you staging that? You've got to be as simple as possible, I think, because because of the, the style of the piece, i.e. that the actors are very um, exposed in their transformations and create that very, very strong and direct relationship with the audience, the audience's imagination and mind's eye will do the work. I try not to be too literal, yeah. but but try and find a representation that kind of just gives a hint to what the physical, what it, what is, what's happening, and then try and, with the actors, play the emotional truth of the scene. So there's a scene where there's two children under stuck under an attic and they're trapped and they're running out of air and they've got no water and it's very hot and it's a, it's a, it's a really heartrending mm. scene. But we've done that, that's really simply done. All we use there, in addition to the set, is a plank of wood. Right. Um, but just by sort of just hinting at the shape of the scene and the barrier between the children and our protagonist to show that there is, there's some, there is a barrier between them and then the audience, they just, their imagination does the rest. Yeah. Are the actors all on stage at the same time? Do they all stay on stage? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And because she, is it Maya or Maya? Maya. Maya. Has some quite long monologues, doesn't yeah. she? And do they, I, I just, because I won't get to see it, I just wondered, are they sort of doing business around her? How's that? Or well, are you focusing it, it, on those speeches? It's different each time. Right. It's different each time. Um, that There's some speech, uh, there's a speech uh, where she talks about an old woman in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And that's quite a long speech. Yeah. Um, but when she, when she gives that speech, I, uh, the other three actors are very still. But what they do is they focus in on her, mm -hmm. so they look at her. So that helps direct the audience's yeah. attention. There's a lot that the kid students can take away from this with regards to the subject matter. But what about theatrically? The one thing that this play is really good at, at, at sort of showing uh, a student is what theatre can do, what theatre can represent on stage without very, very many resources and how can you break out of a naturalistic frame. You can look at how can you tell the story in different ways, how you can bring in different narrators and different voices and different perspectives and also structurally how you can kind of just sort of mess around, mess it up. Um, I think they, they, so therefore there's that, there's that as well, mm. but also I think it will show how much an actor can do in terms of storytelling, how much an actor can give an audience without you having to overwrite or overstage. Yeah. Um, that I think is very important. Um, I also think in terms of the fusion of dramatic techniques and the, um, in terms of dramatic writing, how you can layer one on top of the other to create a very dynamic, fast moving text that has a massive epic landscape. What about uh, technical assistance, uh, lighting and sound? Uh, I, do you use anything to? Well, all our shows, all our shows, both go into schools and into theatres. Right. So when we go into schools, we've got very limited time, very um, usually quite limited time in that space. Um, so we don't have lights. 
when we go into theatres, we have a lighting design. So right. then, you know, it's still the same show, actors set sound-wise, but we then add a lighting design to it. The sound design, that's something with technology today is immensely portable. Um, so we really go to town on the sound design. Um, so we carry, with, especially with this show, an incredibly intricate sound design. It's like the fifth actor. I, I always call it the fifth act because the other, the four actors really kick off it. Thank you very much, Nancy. That's really helpful, really interesting to talk to you about. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you.